So over the last few videos, we've been looking at how to make pendant chords, how to tie knots on them to signify numerical information, and then how to tie these knots in distinct ways to signify non-numerical information as well. Another way, though, that pendant chords can signify information is the way in which they're attached to the primary chord. So it turns out that there are two distinct ways that you can attach one of these chords to the primary chord. And these can also act as signs of binary opposition, distinguishing one category from another on your kipu. In colonial times, we know that people were using attachment type to signify the difference between social groups. Uh, so if one person was from one social group and another was from another social group, they would use distinct attachment types to signify that. So let's take a look at what these attachment types are and how we tie them. So we have all of the pendant and subsidiary chords we made over the course of this tutorial. Now all we need to do is attach the pendant chords to the primary chord and the subsidiary chord to one of the pendant chords. To attach a chord, I make a loop at the end of the chord that doesn't have the end knot I made to keep the chord from unraveling. I make the loop by just twisting the chord in my fingers. Now that I have a loop, I pass the chord through it to form another loop, leaving enough room so that I can pass the loop over the primary chord. Now remember that I can attach pendant chords in one of two ways, recto or verso. If I attach the chord with a loop facing away from me, and the pendant chord on the other side of the primary chord from me, this is called recto. I'm going to attach the first pendant chord in the recto direction. You can see now that it's tightened that the loop has been pulled taut against the pendant chord on the other side of the primary chord from me. Thus, it's recto. Let's attach this next pendant chord in the verso direction. If I attach the chord with the loop facing toward me and the pendant chord on the same side of the primary chord as I am, this is called verso. In this case, we can see the loop is on the same side of the primary chord as I am, and thus it's been attached in the verso direction. Let's attach the white subsidiary chord to the red and white modeled chord. We make a loop for this chord as well. We then pass it around the bottom of the chord and attach it midway up the cord, so that it hangs off the side of the cord. Such a subsidiary cord may record information related to this red and white modeled cord. So that's all it takes. You now know how to make the basic components of an Inca Kipu. Archaeological Inca Kipus can have hundreds of cords with complicated sequences of subsidiaries, colors, and knots, but these basic components should give you the building blocks to make even the most complicated Kipu. Thanks for watching.